Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush with another Giants update video. Two things I want to cover in this video. Two different players on different sides of the ball. Leonard Williams and Orlando Brown Jr. One of the Giants, one of the Ravens. So let's first get into Leonard Williams. This is from Giants Wire. Uh, the author Dan Benton. I'm actually, the one thing I'm going to extract from this is a quote from Jeremy Fowler of ESPN. But basically, the Giants are going to make a very strong and concise effort to try and get Leonard Williams back on this roster. Now, of course, we all know who Leonard Williams is. We all know why we want him back on the roster and basically his impact on the Giants this past season. You know, that Giants defensive line definitely outperformed everybody's expectations as a whole. The defense outperformed everybody's expectations. I think we finished ninth in total defensive ranking on the year, according to uh, Pro Football reference and of course those pass rushing numbers were up for the Giants we were really good one of the best in the league in fact we were 12th in the league in total sacks seventh in quarterback hits and eighth in pressures from the defensive side football in 2020 of course you all know that has 100% a lot to do with Leonard Williams who had that career year for us by himself, Leo covered basically a quarter of the Giants total sacks. Our total sack number on the year was 40. Leo had 11 and a half. Along with that, he had 42 pressures and 18 QB knockdowns. And well, to say that it was a surprise and one of the best years from a Giants defensive lineman that we had in a long time is a severe understatement. Leo was the pass rusher of the Giants this past year. And the Giants, in my opinion, should re-sign him. In fact, they should re-sign every single defensive player on that roster. But I just don't know if it's possible. And we don't know if we could even get Leo back. But we are going to make an effort is what this is saying. I'm going to kind of give my thoughts after I read out this quote here from Jeremy Fowler. He says, I continue to hear Giants will put forth a strong effort to keep Williams. He broke out with 11 and a half sacks and 30 quarterback hits. Williams likes the way defensive coordinator Patrick Graham got him loose with stunts and tilted fronts. Keep the party rolling with a big payday before the new league year. If that doesn't happen, Williams would have plenty of suitors after realizing his enormous potential, enormous potential in 2020. And, and, and that's, that's just the truth, right? A big part of the reasons for Williams' success was Patrick Graham. And once again, big part of the reason for the Giants' defense success as a whole was a defensive coordinator. He surprised everybody more than anybody expected. The defense on all levels of play, defensive line, outside linebackers, inside linebackers, safeties, corners, every single level of play in that defense was just elevated this year. You know what I'm saying? You don't get that top 10 defensive ranking with just having a good defensive line. You have to be good elsewhere as well. And Graham is just a brilliant mind that the Giants found, you know, maybe even that Joe Judge found, you could say, and that came here and was a big reason for that and uh, that's what that's kind of the reason why i'm hoping williams doesn't take too much of a big contract maybe he does want to stay here you know what i'm saying it says that he likes the way that graham used him maybe that plays a factor maybe him just having his best career year here plays a factor maybe he likes staying in new york he has been in new york his entire career just two years with the giants but the uh other three or was it other four with the jets he's a new yorker basically right but my thoughts on it you guys already know I like Leonard Williams. I think that replacing him is going to be one of the hardest things to ever do because replacing what he does from a, you know, a defensive tackle position and that is what he plays. They occasionally put him out on the defensive um, end, well technically on outside linebacker as an edge occasionally, but he's a defensive tackle. And, and, and as a guy whose primary job is to stuff the run and he has this pass rushing ability that he showed in 2020, it's amazing and you don't find out a lot in D tackles but because he's only done it for one year you know what I'm saying because it looks like the scheme might have a lot to do with it or the coordinator might have a lot to do with it and because he's looking for a lot of money you know he he is on record saying he wants to be paid like Aaron Donald that's 20 million dollars plus I just don't know if it's possible I guess I like Leo Leo was brought in the biggest reasons this defense worked this year it's not gonna be easy to replace him you know, especially if you're going to look to replace Leo as Leo, as a pass rushing D tackle, that'll, that's going to be extremely hard, let alone replacing him with an edge rusher. You're going to need to find a legitimate good edge rusher, but that's going to be hard, you know, to, to find whether it's in the free agency or the draft. You know what I'm saying? Leo's a cool dude too. You know what I'm saying? He had me on his uh, Instagram page, you know, had me in one of those videos. Cool dude. You know, he's, he's involved in the Giants, uh, you know, social media and whatnot, but 
it's just something that I look at it and I say to myself, I think the perfect contract for him would be 17, maybe 18 million over the course of four years, five years, if they really want to lock him up long term. But it, 20 million, guys, we're talking guys like Aaron Donald, who just became one of only three players to win defensive player of the year, you know, for three years. You know, he's in that class with LT, in that class with JJ Watt. By the end of his career, he's definitely going to be, I mean, as of right now, if he retires right now, he's going to be a first ball ballot Hall of Famer. By the end of his career, he's going to be known as one of the best defensive players ever, let alone one of the best pass rushers or one of the best defensive tackles ever. And then you got Chris Jones, who wasn't too far behind um, Aaron Donald these past couple years in terms of pass rushing ability from the middle. But the one thing Williams has going for him is that he was the second best defensive tackle in the NFL this year. And, and you cannot shoot that down, right? He was the second best defensive tackle in the NFL this year. The only person who beat him out in terms of the numbers was that guy Aaron Donald. Where you look at sacks or, or whatever other stats you want to look at, Leo was right there behind him. And I really hope, you know, that he takes a look at this team, he says to himself, I love being here. He says to himself, I love what they're building. I can see the potential in his defense. He says to himself, I want to be a part of it. Then he, he takes that sub 20 million deal. Because if the Giants are really going to try to, you know, do their best to get him back, that probably means we're going to have a casualty in Dalvin Thompson. That's, that's, I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I first read this, that's what came to my mind. If we're going to be making a, a, you know, a strong effort to keep Williams, somebody, some casualty is going to fall. Because the, the wording, strong effort sounds to me, they might be planning on giving him a big payday. You know what I'm saying? And that means Dalvin Thompson is going to be left out, which, and I've said it before, I love Dalvin Thompson. He's extremely underrated, but between the two, he's definitely way easier to replace than Leonard Williams. At the end of the day, Dalvin Thompson is a nose tackle. You know what I'm saying? He's a great nose tackle. He's one of the best in the NFL, in my opinion. But you probably just slide Dexter Lawrence over there and then maybe move up BJ Hill to take De Dexter Lawrence's old place or take another type of defensive tackle like D-Law in this upcoming draft or whatnot. But the, the, the replaceable guy is Dalvin Thompson, and he might be the one that's a casualty of a Leonard Williams contract, which I hope is not the case. Let me know what you think about that down below. And then moving into the Orlando Brown Jr. part of the uh, video here, he's officially requested a trade from the Ravens. Now the Ravens offensive tackle, who was filling in for Ronnie Stanley this year and actually got his second Pro Bowl nomination in three years. He does not want to be a part of Baltimore anymore. He's looking to get out and not just to any team, he wants to go to a team that will list him as a left tackle and start him there because he is adamant that that is what he is and that is what he's good at. So let, let's talk about this for a second. This broke literally as I'm recording this video maybe an hour ago. And Orlando Brown Jr. is one of the best tackles in the NFL right now just based off of his performances in the past two years. And of course, it comes up whether or not the Giants should look into him because, well... We still need tackle help, whether, you know, mostly on the right side. But if we get somebody like Orlando Brown Jr. who wants to be a left tackle, you put him at left, you slide Thomas over to the right, and you guys know how I feel about Thomas. I think he can be a really good left tackle in the NFL, especially after we learned that he was playing the entire season on, a, you know, basically a bum ankle, an injured ankle, and he improved towards the end with that injured ankle. Can you imagine what he does on two healthy feet? You know, but if we slide Thomas over to the right, that's a really strong, that's a stacked offensive line right there. <laughs> Andrew Thomas as a right tackle, I'm going to tell you right now, this guy will be one of the best right tackles in the NFL. I'm talking Ryan Ramchick level. Thomas at the right tackle is not going to be any type of joke. And then if you have Orlando Brown Jr. over on the left, and if he performs like he did these past couple of years, you know, like these past three years, we're going to be good. That's going to be one automatically one of the best tackle duos in the NFL, automatically one of the strongest offensive lines in the NFL. And we saw a lot of, you know, concerns with this offseason. We know a lot of people forgetting that we still need a bit more help on that offensive line. But will it happen? I don't think so. <laughs> you look why his price, because you look at two trades in the past couple of years, specifically the Laramie Tunsil one. And you think to yourself, I don't see the Giants giving up any first rounders for this guy, even though he might be worth that. And I bring up the Lermy Tunsil one more so because he matches him in age a bit more than the other big, you know, tackle trade, which happened a couple seasons ago in Trent Williams. And Lermy Tunsil went for two first round picks. Trent Williams went for a fifth and third. Now, Orlando Brown Jr. is not going for a fifth and third, certainly more than that. But he's also not going to go for two first rounders, in my opinion. Tunsil at that point was one of the best, if not the best, left tackles in the league. 
I think that Orlando Brown Jr. is probably going to go for maybe one first or, you know, a good batch of second and thirds or, you know, second and then mid round picks, but definitely not multiple firsts. And, and if he does go for a first, then I think you could count the Giants out because we need that first round pick to try and give DJ some weapons. So it all depends on the price he's going to go for, but I don't see it happening. Even though if it does, if it does happen, that, that would be elite, man. I'll be extremely happy. So guys, let me know what you think about that down below as well. Put all your thoughts down there and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.